Now this is the A11 or the Infantry Tank Mark I. It's the actual original Matilda, although the name's more associated with the later tank. The Infantry Tank Mark I, of which we've got two here at Bovington, and this one is actually, it was modified a bit by a chap called Bob Grundy, who fitted it with a Rover engine and automatic gearbox to make it more simpler to drive. He was having a job getting the original Ford V8 that fitted in these tanks. But that, it, to the out, all outward appearances, it's the same as any other A11. Now, there's two or three things to look at. For a start, I mean, it doesn't look much like a tank. It's, uh, it was done down to a price. That was why they built it. And the price was ridiculously low. It's got a suspension, not unlike the suspension on the six-ton tank. It was a suspension the British Army had rejected when they first took it on, but at the top, by the time this tank came out, they decided it was just what they wanted for it. It's powered, as I say, by a Ford V8 engine driving through a Ford transmission to the um, drive sprocket at the rear. And then you've got tracks coming over here, completely exposed. You'll notice there's not even the tin cover over them. And around the idler at the front, and the idler, of course, is the adjustable wheel you use to tension the track if you need to. It's only a two-man tank. You've got a driver and a commander sitting in the turret who also fires the Vickers machine gun. Now, this chap really had an awful task. If the tank was fitted with radio, as some of them were, one of his jobs was to tune the radio by getting out of the seat in the turret, sitting on the floor, and then reaching behind him to where the radio was kept in the, in the back of the hull. And that was the only way he could tune it in. It was almost impossible. And it meant that while he was doing that, he couldn't look out at all or see where the tank was going. So the driver had to look, and he usually had the hatch open. He was driving with his head out. If he was under fire, the driver only had this vision slit down here to look through and a rotating Vickers periscope in the roof, which the only things he had to give him some idea of where he was going. They only used these tanks once. They were used by 4th and 7th Royal Tank Regiments of the British Expeditionary Force in France in 1940-41. They fought at Arras, and after that, they were finished. We never used them again. We didn't have any. We left most of them for the Germans to play with after that, while we busily retreated to Dunkirk. And, of course, the Germans realised that the British tanks were almost toothless, useless little things like this. And it really is. The only thing it's got going for it is armour thickness. It was about 60 millimetres on the front, which meant that it was more or less bulletproof to any existing German anti-tank gun. But that's not a great commendation because the tank couldn't really fight back. It's got a .303 calibre water-cooled machine gun in the turret. Some were fitted with the .5 calibre machine gun, which is a little bit larger and has slightly heavier punch. But it still wasn't really powerful enough. So there was no actual gun on this tank at all, just one machine gun in a one-man operated manually rotated turret, which wasn't very really clever at all. But it was all we had, and it was regarded in the early part of the war as a perfectly efficient tank. It wasn't, and it ne was never used again, but that's neither here nor there. It's a, one of the models that was produced later. They built them in two batches, mostly by Vickers Armstrong, and they were, um, the later ones had these two stowage bins either side of the front. The other one is slightly different, and you'll notice it if you ever see the two we've got side by side, but otherwise it's difficult to make out. They fitted a few of them with a mine plough that came down in front, like a, a scoop, like a plough that picked up the mines. They never used them. They were a complete waste of time. Um, they were fitted to a chain bracket at the rear, but they, they weren't any use in action at all, so they did away with them. And that the idea was that you'd use them for um, digging out mines in front of enemy defences. Well, since the Germans were attacking us all the time and didn't bother to erect defences, they didn't need them. So that alone was enough to sort of negate them completely. So that's really all there is to tell you about the A11. It's not a very big tank, well, it's tiny really, it only has two men in it and is a complete 
really a waste of money. But we didn't know that at the time. We just started on a war.